It's a very sad saga that we have a government in this country that is actually overseeing the destruction of forests and the grabbing of public land. She fought for a cause to protect the ecosystem at a time those considered powerful in her country gave little concern about the preservation of the environment. She was determined to have the ecosystem remain as it was and was not afraid to reprimand those who attempted to engage in deforestation. I want to say to the Asian we community, we want honesty, we want justice. We want them to do in this country what we can do in India. If we are going to shed blood because of our land, we will. We are used to that. Our forefathers shed blood for our land. We will do so. This is my blood. And I, it, it reminds me of the blood that Waiyaki shed trying to protect Karura Forest. In her words, she warned them that by cutting trees, they were digging their own graves. More than an environmentalist, she also blazed a trail for women's rights and democracy. Her desire was to plant a billion trees to build a healthy planet, and as a result, began a movement, the Greenbelt Movement, that to this day is recognized globally. This is the story of Kenya's renowned hero and environmentalist, Wangari Maathai, a woman who in so many ways may also remind you of Tanzania's BBTT Mohammed, who was instrumental in the struggle for independence. Both of them were not fearful of the government of the day, as long as they fought for what they believed was right. What is even more special about these women is their spirit, they were loved and admired among women in their countries and beyond. Their ability to rally women behind every good cause they undertook was also exceptional. Born in April 1, 1940, Wangare Madhai grew up in Nyeri County, located in Kenya's central region. Her father, who worked as a tenant farmer, was able to send her to school at a time when it wasn't common for girls to be educated. She began her education at Ihide Primary School and later moved to a mission school, St. Cecilia Intermediate Primary School. Following her outstanding performance, she was awarded admission to the only Catholic high school in the country at the time, Loreto High School in Limuru County. Madai was later on in 1960 managed to win a scholarship that saw her attend Mount St. Scholastica College in Atchison, Kansas, in the United States. It is here where she earned her first bachelor's degree in biology in the year 1964. Two years later, she completed a master's degree in biological sciences at the University of Pittsburgh. She returned to Kenya in 1966 and joined the University of Nairobi as an assistant lecturer while pursuing her studies. In 1971, she became the first woman in East and Central Africa to earn a doctorate degree and later, in 1977, she became the first woman to chair the Department of Veterinary Anatomy at the University of Nairobi after graduation. Madhai's indomitable spirit could be seen years before she went into activism. What many did not know is that their initial educational and professional achievements were part of the gradual manifestation of a desire that lingered within from when she was a little girl. A desire bore from a dream she often had when she lived in rural Kenya. She would dream about running next to a stream that no longer existed. That dream inspired her to create an environmental grassroots organization in 1977, dubbed the Greenbelt Movement. Through the organization, she managed to mobilize thousands of women and men to plant tens of millions of trees throughout Kenya. The movement spread to other African countries and contributed to the planting of over 30 million trees. Her efforts never went unnoticed. 
but they led her to fall into opposition with the Kenyan government, which viewed her candidness and criticism as detrimental and unnecessary to citizens. Madhai frequently led struggles against the state, corruption and land grabbing. There was no stopping her. She was resolute in standing by what she believed was right, to the extent that she was once called a mad woman by the late president, Daniel Arap Moy, who ruled Kenya for more than two decades. She was also on several occasions beaten and even arrested by authorities, but this did not stop her in her pursuits. It was in 1989 that she became a household name when she dared to oppose the late President Moy from building a 62-story skyscraper in the country's Uhuru Park. After several letters and demonstrations, Wangari Madai managed to halt the construction. Her movement was more than just about planting trees. She used it as a tool to also champion for human rights. In 1992, she led a hunger strike at Uhuru Park with the mothers of political prisoners who were being held without trial. They were fiercely opposed by the authorities, but Mathai would encourage the women to continue putting more pressure on the government for about 11 months. Eventually, President Moy's government conceded to their demands and released 51 prisoners. Madai had managed to rally women behind her for every just cause she stood by. All this at a time when women's groups were not taken with much seriousness in her country. But they, however, continued to grow more powerful. She was a source of strength and courage for many. What Africa does, or what a country like Kenya does, is a reflection of how the world sees Africa and how we are judged, whether we are really serious about this whether we seem to understand or don't understand. And so it's extremely important that politicians in Kenya realize that we are, we are focused on as a nation, that the world is looking at us. In 1998, she led yet another protest, this time against the construction of Luxari's homes on a 250-acre land that sits in Karura Forest. President Moy was giving away public land that was part of the forest to politicians in his government. Madai protested peacefully against the developments through a tree planting mission. She was fiercely outspoken and this was not well received by everyone, including the then president of Kenya, Daniel Arap Moy. He did not believe in her movement. He called it subversive and even ordered the police to beat her unconscious during a protest where she was wrongfully arrested. While her work life was in turmoil, her home life was also in turmoil. Her husband, Mwangi Madai, a former member of parliament whom she married in 1969, told her on a number of occasions that she was too strong-minded for a woman, stating that he was unable to control her. She did not agree with him and later divorced him in 1977. The divorce was costly, and with a lawyer fee and loss of her husband's income, she found it difficult to support herself and her three children on low-wage income. Elected to Kenya's National Assembly in 2002 as a member of parliament and an assistant minister for the environment, she continued fighting for women's rights, democratic space, multi-partism, against corruption, land grabbing, and the continued contempt for women. In 2004, Wangari Madai, who was at the time a social, environmental and political activist, became the first African woman to win the Nobel Peace Prize. Her compelling life story is intimately linked with the social and political changes that so much of Africa has been through since the idea of gaining independence from European colonialism began to gain traction shortly after the World War II. The driving force in everything she fought for was the lives of Kenyans and by extension of people in many other developing countries that she believed could be made better 
if economic and social progress went hand in hand with environmental protection. A great honor such as this bestowed on an African woman can only encourage and empower women, especially in the African region. And it can only make men stand up and wonder what hit them. She will sadly lose her battle with ovarian cancer on September 25, 2011. This was a battle she fought privately. She was buried at the age of 71 at the Wangari Murthai Institute for Peace and Environmental Studies in Nairobi. She stood up for African women. She stood up for the African people to see that we can also make our contribution. Nairobi is one of the greatest leaders of our country. The best way we can honor her is to carry on the great work she started, especially in the fields of environmental conservation, social justice, human rights, and democracy. Wangari Mathai's dedicated fight for environmental conservation and sustainability, years later, is seen as a cause worthy of being adopted globally as nations continue to grapple with meeting their obligations on mitigating climate change. In the midst of the various initiatives she led, she authored four books, namely The Green Belt Movement, Unbowed, The Challenge for Africa, and Replenishing the Earth. She touched the hearts of rural women in her country and beyond, heads of state, people of every faith, in her nation and across continents. Wangari Madhai, remains a constant reminder of how one person, driven by passion for helping others, can inspire change for a lifetime. Sometimes we are just violent against each other. Human beings is a strange species because sometimes it turns on itself and destroys itself. <laughs>